So there is a pastor who is causing a bit of a stir out here. Sex before marriage that people causing is no longer a sin. I'm not understanding how you got to this era. A lot of times you are trying to understand how does this person get it wrong? Or how does this person get it this wrong? There's a lot of problems that you can already hear here. This is gonna get bad. <laughs> it's the Rick Reality Show. We do daily Christian commentary videos. I haven't had enough that time to think about this video um, because I haven't watched the video. And so I'm only gonna be watching the video now. I did hear about five to seven seconds of the video that I was like, stop, we'll watch this when we are in front of the video. Other videos that are done today, they'll be down in the big comments. We do multiple upload videos if it's your first time encountering this channel. And if you like this kind of vi videos, uh, you will find others down there in the pink comments. I'm still at the house today. I'm not back at the studio yet. Yes, you can see no longer coughing. We can breathe easy. <laughs> Let's hear what the caption says before we go to what the video says. So he says, end time revival evangelical, that's the name of his ministry. He says, shaking the same tables of, rel of religion, this one and unmasking the lies about sex. Very interesting. He says, this video sermon is only for those connected to the finished work of Christ. So that already assumes that there is another group that's not connected. So I'm very interested in hearing how he deals with that and the desires to understand the grace of God. It is not for the religious hardened and perfectionist hypocrites. I think the hypocrites or the people that is calling hypocrites, they might better understand what it defiles uh, than his particular position to already label them. Sex, whether it is before marriage, whether it is after marriage, whether it is not during marriage, is no longer a sin. Any okay, so... That is not addressing. That's why I brought up that point. So you see that seven seconds that I'm saying I watched, that was the part that I that I saw that I was like, eh, we'll watch this in front of them. So it doesn't address the idea of another person uh, 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 going out and having sex with another person that they're not married to. Or it doesn't acknowledge that. With the way that he has just put it now, we are not putting words in his mouth. This is him. And by the way, the cut, 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 cut that you see here, it's his own. He's the one that edited this video this way. And so it doesn't address that. So it means that humans have a higher standard than God. By, by what he just said there, <laughs> you can see already problems that are creeping up. But continue. Preacher saying that sex with a man is a sin is an enemy of the finished work and it's not really. Okay. okay. He says, a person who says the, that then is an enemy of the cross. Now, if a person is an enemy of the cross, this is how you deal with, or you, you answer that particular part. You look into the old and you see what it implies. And in the Old Testament, it implies the idea of union with men. Because the, the Christ's finished work is the union with God. Okay? Now, it is not possible for us to stop sin or to kind of... Uh, not sin in a certain area if we don't have the Holy Spirit. Because now that we are, we, are, we, are, we are saved, we are now capable of doing that, which is what the goal is. And so therefore for him, when he says that when a person says that uh, sex, before, sex before marriage it is sin, they are then not connected to the finished work. He is misunderstanding the aspect of not being able to stop sin. Why? You are not saved. A person who is not saved has, they, they don't have the power to stop it. But when you are now saved, you are capable. Okay. Over explaining something that is very simple. Holding yourself saying that you want to, this is when you get married, that is when you are saved. You are just holding yourself for nothing. It has nothing to do with holiness. It has nothing to do with righteousness. It has nothing to do with purity. Because Jesus already you know, renewing our mind in your understanding of what Jesus has done. If sin has been destroyed, then that means that this. Sex before marriage that people call sin is no longer a sin because of what Jesus has done on the cross. He's making so many mistakes and he is editing the video badly. That's why I mentioned that point. Is that he is edited the video extremely terrible to a point where when we are now analyzing here, it will be, it will be as if we are the ones who are painting him a certain way. While as it's his... The editing is rubbish. The editing of this pasta is rubbish. You edited the video rubbish. Okay, just cheese us. Because people are going to use that. I want to be very clear here. People are going to use that thing to say that we are badly interpreting what he said. He's not quoted a verse to illustrate what... How does renewing of the mind 
address the the sin nature need to have sex outside of marriage. The renewing of the mind is to start thinking like God. That was the goal of that. Him, he connects the renewing of the mind, which is saying, stop thinking of the desire that you have to do it and think like God, which is addressing union, which is why he says, do not be equally yoked. You see that? So that's those of us who, who you call hypocrites, <laughs> We know we have that desire to be sexual outside of marriage. We don't do it because we know it defiles what is union. Jesus Christ, edit better so that we can people won't be blamed. I know there will be people that are saying now people are misunderstanding him <laughs> because of how badly he edited the video. This Sexual formality that people call sin is no longer a sin because of is no longer a sin. So what happened for it not longer to be a sin? I'm interested. What Jesus has done on the cross. Sin. It's no longer a sin because of what Jesus has done on the cross. I just explained now. Do you see where the problem is? Is that he is not understanding the cross was to achieve the goal of uniting us back with God. Sex before sin is addressing the union between men. This is the problem with people that don't study. Okay? And I'm not even talking about going to theology or anything. This is the problem. Because he doesn't understand. There is what we call as the doctrine of man. Okay? Then there will be the doctrine of humatology. The doctrine of the spirit. Then there will be the, the Christology. <laughs> the doctrine of Christ. Which gets you to understand what Christ accomplished. So for him... He's not understanding the doctrine of man. He's not understanding the defiled nature of man so that he can understand that what sin does with man. Sex before marriage is addressing the union before, between men. I'm not understanding how he got to this error. You know, there are people, a lot of times you are trying to understand how does this person get it wrong? Or how does this person get it this wrong? Sex before marriage that people call sin is no longer a sin because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Sin has died. And, and so there is no sin anymore because before God, Jesus has become the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Okay, if, there is, if sin has died and there is no more sin, why do we repent? Because Jesus has taken it away, right? Do you see what, what then it affects? It means that everyone is saved. <laughs> it goes to universalism, which is another complete different doctrine. Just by being wrong on the aspects of what it affects, he's now touched on the issue of you know, everybody is, is saved by the explanation. So basically what he's saying, let me explain from back there to where he is now. What he is saying is that because Jesus came and he died, he destroyed sin. There is no more sin. By that understanding and that logic, nobody must come to repent. He calls that the finished work. The finished work is acknowledging the sacrifice that is made for you. But the, the whole reason of us coming to repentance died for that. Not to say that it is not there. He died for that. Romans also, which is written after Christ died. He says, he that says is without sin... He is, and the truth is not in him. So how is it dead when he, Paul is addressing sin after Jesus is singing? And if sin is taken away and there's no more sin, why is it in Revelation the books are open so that their sins are told to them? So that people can live in a life of liberty and a life of grace. The reason why many people usually say that it should be done in marriage, it is because the act of sex itself, it's a covenant. That is, whenever you Whenever you have sex with someone, then you enter into a covenant that is a covenant binding you and that person together. It's a covenant itself. And so, because of their religious mentality in those days, they feel that since this is a covenant, but that, is, that was in religion, that was not in the era of grace, they were said that in religion. But now there is grace and sin as the cross. Sin. This is why, on the last time when we spoke about this thing of being religious, I think it was on the video where someone had said, I don't want to say who. I think there was someone who said, ah, I, being religious is what was, I think it was Jay. I can't remember exactly. I explained something that I'm going to further here again. The idea of being religious is being active. 
a lot of Christians have said, you know, Christianity is not a religion, and so therefore uh, don't be religious. But they have misunderstood the term being religious, according to the what the Bible lists. As a matter of fact, James saw this misunderstanding and he addressed it. And he said, is, is, being not, is not being religious visiting the mother, uh, uh, the homeless, visiting the... What, he lists a couple of things there. He tells you what being religious is. So this, contem this condemning the word being religious has caused him now to also now think, oh no, I'm not religious. <laughs> the idea of being religious is that you are active. So as a Christian who doesn't do certain things because it is contrary to the nature of God, that's me being religious. So when you are being a disciple, you are being religious. The idea of being religious is not to say, ah, me, I stick to the... Bazalwani, we are all religious in one way or another. Religion is a good thing. <laughs> Religion is a good thing. It is a moral line. So you can see how many things he's, 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 he's kicked out. He dare not even quote the verse, because, any verse, because there is no verse that he will find. He is completely dead. Yeah, his logic doesn't make sense whatsoever. Uh, and so... I would be interested in hearing his thoughts in person, like on a video, so that we can show him that his errors are, are just all over the place. We do live streams on Saturday, so if he does see it, he can come there. Uh, but his, his logic is completely flawed. He doesn't even dare to, 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 to quote any verse. Sin is not dead. If sin is dead and it's removed, nobody must repent. We repent because sin is still there. The logic behind his thought is just completely dead but is there actually to show we do daily christian commentary videos uh, to each man his own uh, but to this man his own is 